Welcome to Mind Over Matter, where we feature young Jamaicans who are shooting for the stars. I'm your host, Margaret Boyne. She's a mixed media artist, the Prince Claus Fund Seed Awards recipient for 2021. She's an art educator. She's currently pursuing her master's in leadership in education at John Moore Liverpool University. Her work has been exhibited here in Jamaica and in the UK. She shares her journey in the art space. My guest is Desana Watson. Welcome to my Nova Mata, Desana. Hi, thank you for inviting me. It's such a pleasure. Yes, and it's a pleasure having you. <laughs> um, you have been making a name for yourself in the art world. Um, you're the recipient of the Prince Claus Seed Award for 2021. Um, tell me about that. So the Prince Claus Seed Awards is given to 100 artists across the world. Uh, and it is a fund that is allotted to upcoming or mid-career artists or cultural practitioners that the organization believed would make great future leaders. And so I applied and amongst 2,600 applicants, I was one of the awardees. No, I think it's... Yes, it was quite a lot of persons. That's what a fund is. It's a monetary fund, but it also comes with mentorship where they track your career and offer advice and also other opportunities to network with artists across the world. Mm -hmm. So that's a big thing. Um, yes, you're a mixed is. media artist. Can you tell us what is mixed media? Mixed media simply means that you're using a mixture of materials. Um, mm -hmm. the, tra the traditional artists will choose one um, media to use, okay. but a mixed media is not, mixed media art is not limited. For example, they don't just use acrylic paint or mm -hmm. they don't just use oil paint, but it's really a matter of what they're trying to portray for myself. It do, it's just a matter of what I want that artwork to portray. I'll choose a selection of materials to portray that. So for example, a mixed media artist like myself would use paper, ink, canvas, uh, magazines, um, different type of documents, found objects for example mm -hmm. to create an artwork okay so take me back when did this love of art start wow <laughs> well I think it started from I was a child because mm -hmm. I remember my early beatings came from drawing on my mother's wall Mm -hmm. And we always had to, to she gave us the sponge, <laughs> mix a little water with the detergent and stuff, and she gave us the sponge to get it off her wall. <laughs> um, there was that, but for me, as a child, I was in counseling when I was about nine years old, and there was this activity that they kept on giving us where you were to draw something that you were feeling. And I didn't take the activity serious, I just drew whatever it was no matter of what I was feeling but what I wanted to draw in that moment no mm -hmm. I realized that based on what I drew the council would have a different perspective of me and I was like hmm so I <laughs> can change people's minds based on what I draw mm -hmm. and I think from then it started from just giving trouble and trying mm -hmm. to trick the counselors and <laughs> I, I knew my mother. I know. I, I think mommy <laughs> recognized that this was going to be something great. So every okay. gift after that was art based. Mm -hmm. And so she really just fed that love. And I just continued through doing that through art school. Mm -hmm. Well, through so, high school rather. Okay. So you mentioned art um, during counseling. Was that like you were using it as therapy? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um. Um, Desana, there is a perception out there that boy, why waste your time doing art? Because I mean, I know you can't make no money from that. Jamaicans don't really buy art and you can't find something else to do. I mean, did anybody dissuade you from pursuing that? I got, um, I got the backlash from all categories of life. <laughs> I had. Family members that says, why are you wasting just like that? 
why are you wasting your time and energy? I was told that, you know, you're brilliant. You should go pursue the sciences and use your brain space for something else. Mm -hmm. I was told, okay, even if you choose art, make it be a side hustle. Yes, yeah, so, side. <laughs> so find understand. something, a true career, and then you can always do that on the side or else you're going to starve. So yeah. I've gotten discouragement from, you know, teachers that thought that my potential was far greater than what what I could tap into as a, a creative mm -hmm. to family members who I think was just genuinely concerned. Mm -hmm. um, so I've gotten a discouragement. But uh, all of that discouragement was my, my mother's encouragement trumped okay. all of that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, once you get to go ahead from mommy, everybody right. else can yeah. say yeah, right? So <laughs> mommy was saying yes, everybody else can say no. Right. <laughs> Yes, that is usually the case. Yes. <laughs> All right. So you actually studied art. Where where did you do that? Well, first I did art in high school. So I did visual mm. arts in high school. And then I matriculated to Edna Manley College of the Visual and Performing Arts. And that's mm -hmm. where I did my bachelor's in fine mm. arts painting. Okay. Tell me about your experience there. For persons who probably, you know, might be hesitant, want to, but might be hesitant in going to art school. This is what I say. And I've been saying it even before I went into art school. Once you're going to become a creator of any sort, whether it be dance or mm -hmm. drama or visual art, go in with a plan, go in with a vision, mm -hmm. go in knowing that you're going to curate your own path. There's no set path. There's no get the degree and then go into this job. But there is definitely bits and pieces of information that other trailblazers have set that you can observe and learn from. Mm -hmm. I would also say that if you're going to be an artist, then you have to have more than one thing that you are capable of doing, more than one ways to earn. Because I believe one of the, the things that really kills your your start up as an artist is that in the beginning you are looking for this to make the money and it doesn't get mm -hmm. enough time to build mm -hmm. as a brand um, for you to really have the impact that you want. So I would say go into it with more than one ways to earn and then two, don't go into it looking for a set path, go into it knowing that this is something you're going to have to curate every single day to your responsibility. Mm -hmm. And then I would say, go do it. Mm -hmm. I would say, go do it. And I would say, don't give up on it even when it feels as if it doesn't make any sense and even when other persons tell you that this career path is not worth it mm. I think art school is a beautiful experience it, it was for me definitely challenged what I thought art was uh, because you know you go in you go in thinking oh I'm talented yes. and you know it's all like, you're just gonna just go shell down art school yes. and then you go in and you realize <laughs> Realize that there's this world <laughs> of information that you are not exposed to. And yeah. <laughs> they're like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> um, art, art school is an introduction to the art world. Mm -hmm. It's just the foundation. Mm -hmm. That's where the journey starts. So you go there, you get the foundation, and then you build on it. Mm -hmm. Just go there. Don't lose yourself. Don't lose your identity and keep your vision alive. But I think it was a great experience for me. I certainly grew as an artist because after being exposed to all these variety of what an art career could be, I got the chance to sit down and say, okay, but what do I want? What's the path that I want to choose? And that I think has shaped the artist that I am today. Mm -hmm. So how would you describe your work? My work? Ooh, that's is a lot <laughs> uh, my, but if, if I had to choose one phrase I would say that my work is conversational mm. um, and and that's very important to me as an artist it's I don't want somebody to just stop and say oh this is pretty mm -hmm, mm -hmm. this is pretty and it just stops there and you move on mm -hmm. I want the work to pull you in for you to ask questions and for you to pull somebody else in and say, Why, what do you think about this? Or you start to engage with the content that, that is there. Mm -hmm. So I think that's one of the reasons why my work is mixed media, mm -hmm. because sometimes I feel so limited to one material. Mm -hmm. um, for example, there is, for example, I want a word to jump out at you. Instead of trying to find a very abstract way to do that, I just get a word from a newspaper and I put it in there. 
you know, or a part of a poem. Um, so it starts the conversation. Mm-hmm. So my work is very um conversational and my work is very informative. Mm-hmm. I come from the standpoint of I'm a researcher at heart. I love history. Okay. I'm a researcher at heart. Mm-hmm. And so I infuse these narratives into my work and you're kind of forced to pick the part that you can connect with and then question the other parts that you don't know. Mm-hmm. So my work is conversational. Um, what are the themes that you usually use in your work? Okay, for my work, I focus on spaces mm-hmm. and the histories of spaces mm-hmm. and how those histories um, help us to narrate Mm -hmm. what is happening today or how those histories dictate what we can and cannot do so -hmm. whether I'm talking about the sea and the narrative behind the sea and the history behind the sea um, on Jamaica's colonial history or I'm talking about just a city and how the 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 developers of that city the places within that city um, the different um, politicians Mm -hmm. that have been ruling over that territory but it's always about spaces and how people are engaging with spaces okay so how do you go about conceptualizing okay so i read first i Mm -hmm. read first and um because i love to read i love to to put a lot of that information into my artwork Mm -hmm. so the piece one of my popular pieces um are are they they have maps in them they mm-hmm. reference maps. Okay. So the maps is a starting point. So you will see this map of Kingston. You already know we're going to be talking about Kingston, mm-hmm. right? So mm-hmm. the map. So I use images of maps and names of places and spaces. And then I would pull on the history, probably um, newspaper clippings about things that would be happening in that time um, and things that are happening in the space today. And that is the basis of the conversation. Um, I've had other pieces where I use maps and I use contracts, whether I'm talking about marital contracts or I'm talking about the sale of a, a woman or the sale of a person to bring into that conversation. But you always have maps. You mm-hmm. always have historic information. And it is infused together in a way where you're questioning why was that done? Mm-hmm. So that is how I conceptualize my work. Mm-hmm. I am trying to show you what's happening within this space and trying and trying for you to question why these things are. Mm-hmm. Um, your creative process, do you, um, while you paint the things come to you or do you think about it beforehand? You know, I like to say I have dreams of how the artwork should be. Okay. I have an image of what the artwork should be in the end and mm-hmm. I would sketch it. But mm-hmm. because I'm a multimedia artist, I work with layers. And so what I will do, I will think about the piece and I backtrack mm-hmm. and I break down each layer of paint or each material into steps. And I will have probably about 12 to 15 layers and I develop it with layers. So one layer might have just the maps. Mm-hmm. Another layer might just have names of spaces. Another layer might be newspaper clippings that speaks about what was happening in this area. Another layer might be if I want to include images of women or men. So I'll break it down into layers and I map out which layers I want um, on top of each other. Mm-hmm. And then the final thing comes together. So okay. if you see if you see my piece while I'm working, it looks like chaos because you don't understand it. Mm-hmm. But as when you come into the space and you're like, wait, yeah. Oh, yeah. that's why that's there. <laughs> yes. Um, creative minds, though, um, this and I usually um, want to be inspired. Where does your inspiration come from? I love to talk to people. I love to talk to older persons. They have the best stories because they're always reflecting on the good old days. And mm-hmm. so while they're sharing their narratives, I mm-hmm. know the contemporary. And that tends to get me, that tends to get me stirred. Because I'm listening to these old stories that I know if if nobody's talking about them, they're going to be lost. And these things represent history. Mm. So that gets me excited. Um, so conversations in general, love to talk to people. I always say that you can pay me to talk. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I love to talk. And yeah. before I talk <laughs> and I hear something, I, I write it down. I document a lot. So I might 
-hmm. you might say something interesting to me today and it doesn't go anywhere yet but I write it down mm -hmm. two months down the line somebody else says something that is kind of contradicting or it complements and I'm like oh mm -hmm. there is some continuity here and it finds itself in, into an artwork mm -hmm. you're an art educator where do you teach and how long have you been teaching I teach at the Wycliffe Martin High School in Port Maria, St. Mary. The school mm -hmm. is formerly named Brimmervale High School. And I have been teaching there for four years. Mm -hmm. do, do you find, though, as an art teacher, do you have to be, you, you find yourself reassuring parents that um, art is a viable thing if the child want to, is interested in pursuing it? You find yourself doing that every day. My first year, <laughs> I recognized, my first year, I recognized <laughs> that the bigger part of my challenge was not the students; it was the parents. <laughs> they come to class and they're excited, <laughs> and you wonder what happened to that child that was so excited <laughs> yesterday. It's a parent, yeah. and so I realized um, after year one that if I were to get anywhere, I'd have to to engage the parents. Mm -hmm. it was just the other day the grade nines are selecting their subjects and we had to to speak to the parent body um to kind of sell our subject and I was I'm a very frank person so I went and I said listen to me parent <laughs> we are in the era where the desk job is not putting it again yes. the one job is not doing it <laughs> the persons who are making it in terms of financially they are the persons who are innovating mm -hmm. and I told the parent you need to have a conversation with your child. And if you see that your child has a creative interest, then you send them to visual arts because this is just a foundation for something even greater, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And I gave them examples of, okay, you see your child, they're always dressing up, you know, putting on clothes. We maybe not have a fashion mm -hmm. department, but there are some foundations that mm -hmm. they still need to learn. They might be able to design, right? And that's something they will learn in visual arts. You see that they love makeup. Well, we're still doing colors and pigments and we're still doing creative elements right so you send them to my class at that point so I told them you need to ensure that you know where your child is going where their interests are and if it's aligned and you send them to do a creative subject I'm not trying to tell them to just let your child pick my subject because I'm like to draw it has to have a purpose right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because you're going to waste my time you're going to waste your parents money and the subject is expensive either mm -hmm. way so I have this conversation with parents and students what is the purpose? And if you don't have a purpose, if it's just you like it, but you, you don't say, no, mm -hmm. you don't need to be in my class. <laughs> but if you do indeed have a plan, then I can help you with that because I myself, I'm an artist and I can guide you in that way. So I do have the conversation with the parents and I do help my students to see how visual arts can be paired with their other interests. Mm -hmm. That has been my strategy. And that was that's, that's what has worked for me for the last three years. Oh, year one was a mess but mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, <I'm here. laughs> um, you're presently doing your master's as well so where do you find time to to paint it's a very very intentional process mm -hmm. I this is what I say art is important to me art is priority to me nobody will take what I do seriously if I don't take it seriously mm -hmm. And so there are so many, so many dinners and birthday parties that I don't go to. <laughs> mm -hmm. There's so many afterward chattings that Miss Watson is not going to be there. You know, my 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 no, my no, <laughs> yes. I have I, I have perfected the art of saying no, I cannot do that. I have <laughs> something else. And you know, to get over me <laughs> and to put in that time, it's not easy. I will never tell you that it's easy. It takes a lot of effort. And there are some times that I am drained. Mm -hmm. But I, I made a commitment to myself that I want to be one of the artists from Jamaica that makes it. Mm -hmm. Because I want to show other young people that it can be done. Mm -hmm. And I just have to put in the work. So I have a timetable. I schedule everything. And remember I told you that I work in processes. Mm -hmm. So I... I lay out my week or my month and I know the projects I want to get done I itemize what needs to get done for each project and I just do it so if I'm putting in two hours today and all I'm doing is priming canvases that's what I'm doing I'm priming mm -hmm. canvases mm -hmm. if I'm researching today and I'm going to be on a computer researching a particular area that's what I'm doing mm -hmm. so it's very intentional 
of course I'm also studying so you know the assignments have to get done yes. and those master's assignments are mm-hmm. not pretty they mm-hmm. are not pretty um <laughs> it's just a lot of sacrifice to be honest yeah mm-hmm. all right we were in a pandemic right the place upside down everything topsy-turvy no art is a is a a focused activity did it affect did the spirit affect your creativity COVID-19 was a blessing for me. What? <laughs> I, I, don't say, I don't say it a lot because I realize that, you know, it's a so quiet yes. for many persons. <laughs> right. It's a so quiet for many persons, but COVID-19 was a blessing for me. My first year as an educator, I poured all my heart and soul and energy into teaching. And I had neglected my practice when, and I, I felt like I was just dying in the profession. When mm-hmm. COVID-19 came in March, March 11, I will never forget that day, <laughs> March 11. And they said, country lock dong, go home. Listen to me. That was, a, I took up my brushes. Because you know what? <laughs> I took up my brushes, dust them off. And I started to paint. And <laughs> oh. no, it yeah. was what I needed. It was what I needed. And because, you know, everything was now online, mm-hmm. I, I got to be able to teach while painting. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. applied for grants and for residencies that I would never have found the time to do if I was mm-hmm. in the, the traditional um, school system going, okay. going to work face to face. And I did a whole residency in COVID time. I did two mm-hmm. exhibitions in COVID mm-hmm. time because for the first time I could be in a studio doing a residency. And I could log on to my class and show my students what I was doing and use that to teach, mm-hmm. right? So I was doing dual things. Um, so COVID was a blessing for me. And <laughs> yes. practice. You, you kind of need, you kind of need to be by yourself sometime for to harness those ideas. And so while everybody else was frustrated, being depressed, it was what myself as a creator ne- creator needed mm-hmm. to just be alone with my thoughts and get mm-hmm. these ideas gelled together. So mm-hmm. all right, let's books. um let's talk about the residency um first for my viewers or my listeners who might not know what a residency is can you tell us an art residence is one of the ways that an artist can make money it Mm -hmm. is where an organization provides funding for you to come in and create art so they provide the materials or the funding for the materials and they give you a space to come into mm-hmm. a studio space to do that work. And at the end of it, you they also host an exhibition for you. Mm-hmm. So it's basically they're paying you to come and create art and giving you a, a space away from your regular day-to-day um, job or life mm-hmm. to just be in a creative area. Mm-hmm. And for some residences, they have Um, other artists come in and speak to you and inspire you and talk to you about your work give you more perspective Um, so it's a paid opportunity for for artists Mm -hmm. one that I think is very beneficial okay so you're you are an artist in residence in Liverpool tell us about that that experience that was an experience of a lifetime so the residency came in conjunction with an exhibition that is the very first all Jamaican art exhibition in Liverpool. And the Liverpool John Moore University Mm -hmm. has been planning that exhibition for four years, led by Dr. Mm -hmm. Emma Roberts. And so, because they're gonna be featuring 32 Jamaican artists, myself and Omar McKay being the only contemporary young, well, young Jamaican artist Mm -hmm, in terms mm -hmm. of the last four years just leaving art school they wanted one artist to be on the ground and so I was asked to come in and to do a residency in their space now being who I am and I love conversations I chose <laughs> for my, my residency <laughs> to be an, 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 an engaging residency mm-hmm. and so what I did was I conducted a workshop called the Remap Project and I, I think I went to eight schools we did three community groups um, where and it was over 300 persons participated. And it's basically where I brought persons in the Liverpool area, students, adults, family groups, into a very simplified version of my artistic process. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, conceptualize this entire um, remap project where we use mm-hmm. maps and 
I gave them five to eight steps. And at the end of it, the conversation was simple just for you to see how you impose yourself onto faces mm -hmm. and vice versa. Mm -hmm. Brilliant project. And the university, as I said before, they paid for all of this, right? Accommodation, materials, transportation, everything. And so what, what I had basically gone there to do is to bring engagement to the exhibition. So here I am, they have this all Jamaican art exhibition and you have this art, you have this Jamaican artist who's traveling around Liverpool, going to these spaces, um, doing these interviews, having these conversations. Mm -hmm. One of the things I did when I went there, I had to give a lecture mm -hmm. on um, my art and Jamaican art and how it has been developing. I went into schools mm -hmm. and had artists talk with students, talking to them about the, the history of Jamaica and Liverpool. Okay. Uh, so it was, it was, it's, let me tell you, it was a lot of work, mm -hmm. but it, it, it was very, very good for the purpose of the exhibition. Um, so it was, it was, I, I was there for one month and mm -hmm. I can say that it was a very successful trip. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk about your work that was exhibited there. Um, retention of a colonial, pa um, colonial past. Yes. Um, tell me about that piece or tell us about that piece. Well, firstly, it's a 75 feet wide piece. 75, 75 feet? <laughs> yes, but it wraps the room, yes. Wow. <laughs> it, it wraps the room, so it is very jarring in terms of it takes up space itself. Mm -hmm. That piece tracks the history of Kingston from 1705 to 2018 in terms of showing you how the town plan how it changed from the initial town plan to where it is today, how um, the space that was once just downtown Kingston has mm -hmm. become this such a larger space called Kingston and kind of tracking the development and the lack thereof of some mm -hmm, spaces throughout mm -hmm, history. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it, it, it really just kind of zones in on, on, on Kingston as a space, talking to you about how this one space was, just, was, was built by Blacks but developed for white elites and how because it became a space where people associated it with status and wealth, a lot of people started to rush into the space and how because of that, they had to develop the space and widen the borders and a lot of the narratives mm -hmm. that come with that. Mm -hmm. um, so the piece, the piece will, 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 will connect with several persons because you will find older persons who would know when that community was right. that mm -hmm. And people who put in names for no. So remember I was telling you earlier words and key things from the maps. So if a particular street name was changed, I would show that you will ha I'll have maps on it that shows the crime rate mm. or um, mm. to show you the amount of persons living in one particular area against another. So you start to ask your, yourself questions. Why, why is the majority of persons living in this very small space and the minority mm. live here? You know, ask yourself questions. Why did the border of Kingston change? Why does it keep mm -hmm. changing? Who is it accommodating? Mm -hmm. So it, it tracks the history of Kingston. And um, there are two, the, the slave ship diagram is used on the piece twice. And within the slave ship diagram, there are names, uh, street names of places in Kingston. And mm -hmm. the reality is just to show you that those street names came on the ship. From, um, okay. Whether um, whether the, the streets were named based on who owned the streets or the type of the type of factories that were on the street, things like that, mm -hmm. and just to kind of let people see that you know the place is what it is today, also because of where it's coming from. So those are some things that are are within mm -hmm. the piece, and uh, it, it's so, it's a very dense. Piece. So it's very interesting, man. Um, so how long you, 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 it took you to 75 feet? Ooh. How long did it take you to make that? <laughs> but, you know, it, it's interesting. I would say it took four years to conceptualize mm. um, because I would never say that it's just final year because I've always been fascinated with, mm -hmm. with the concepts in that piece. I just, it took me four years to find myself and find that that's what I wanted to talk about. But uh january to april that was when the piece was done um mm. i decided that i had all this information my lecturers were saying that i keep putting too much information on one small artwork 
And every lecturer kept on saying the same thing. <laughs> yes. You're saying too much. You're saying too much. You're saying too much for this small art piece. And I got upset one day. Yes. I went to the store. <laughs> I went to the LPSR. And I bought the 25 yards of canvas. And I said, okay. This is and I'm putting too much on it. Okay, no, I have 25 yards. What are you going to tell me now? And <laughs> that was it. <laughs> do, do you think that it's the best piece of art that you have done so far? Do you think so? Or which one, if not? I think that was the first piece that I created that was truly me. Mm. That's what I think. And I think that's why it, it, it has the effect that it has. The rest of them, I had so many persons, lecturers and just outside persons saying, I don't think you should put that. I think you should paint this. I think you should paint landscape. Mm-hmm. I think you should put that. I think you should remove that. When I was doing that piece, um, my lecturers and I did not agree on the, where, where it was supposed to go. And I went home. I left campus. I packed up my things. I went to my house. And I just came back every two weeks to let them know the progress. And, you know, every week they came, they gave the recommendations. You should do this. You should cut the work. You should that. <laughs> I was like, okay, I signed the paper, went back home and did what I wanted to do <laughs> and presented the work. At the end, it was the first piece that I defended and said, no, 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 no. This is a conversation we're going to have mm-hmm. in spite of what everybody else wants to say. So I think in that piece, I found my voice. Mm-hmm. So that's the strength that that piece has for me. And it, it clearly has been touching hard. Mm-hmm. All right. So who are your biggest um, artistic influences? Oh, that's a lot. There's so much. Oh, wow. There is so much. Okay. Uh, Matthew McCarthy is a Jamaican artist, brilliant young artist. Mm-hmm. And there is this lady called Whitney Austin. She is an African-American um, woman that Mm -hmm. was not formally trained in art was an aerocyst and decided that she was losing herself but she remembered she had this passion for art she just left the job started doing art and she's doing great things love her passion she's bold Matthew McCarthy is a young Jamaican artist that Mm -hmm. who is kind of counter-cultural in terms of his process who just decided to do his own thing and has really taken off on the international um, scene and also locally so those two are two individuals that I highly, highly respect for their boldness. Mm-hmm. Everybody I like in the art world are people who don't care what nobody say. Mm-hmm. <laughs> those are the people that I connect my heart to because yes. those are the things I want to do. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So those two, those two artists, um, I, I extremely mm-hmm. admire. Mm-hmm. And most recently when I went to Liverpool, there's this artist called Gioni Warner young artist you know also finished completed her masters already but her work is talking about her british caribbean narrative and mm-hmm. what that feels like to be in liverpool and being being in england but to mm-hmm. as, as she would say twice rejected because mm-hmm. she, she is she's a woman one um she's black but she's also caribbean right and just how her experience is very different from all the people around her Mm-hmm. So I, I like those conversations. And then it, 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 you'd realize it's about the conversation. Yes, me. I realize. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, where on social media can persons find you? If you're on Instagram, you can mm-hmm. find me at desana, art, And I also have my website, desanawatsonartinternational.com. Mm-hmm. And I'm also on Facebook as this Anna Watson Art International and on YouTube, the same name. Before I leave, what advice do you have for young people, especially those who, you know, have a passion for art, who want to turn it into a career? So my, my, my phrase has always been, I am an artist, not just by profession, but my existence and the mere fact that it's not just a job thing, it means that you can't run from it. So I will say this, you have an artistic voice that the world needs. Every other person that you look up to, they have an artistic voice and they made the decision to own it. And so you need to understand that what you have to say equally has has weight and it is important and how you do something equally has weight and is important 
And you would definitely be robbing the world and be robbing your audience of that if you choose to keep it to yourself. So I would say pursue it and pursue it with all your might. You will get the person to discourage you and tell you all the reasons why you should not do it. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, you are the only person that God gave this vision and you are the only person that has the responsibility to bring it to fruition. So do it. Mm -hmm. That's my encouragement. And it was great talking to you. I had a, a lovely conversation and I just want to wish you all the best, more success, more money in the process. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and thanks again. Thank you very much for the invite. It was a pleasure being on the other side of the screen okay. today. Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs>